All right, man. So how are you doing today? Great, man. Thanks for having me on here. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I sent you uh, a little bit about how it's going to go already. I'm just going to try to see what I got up for you. Yeah, so you have a channel called Learn Your Lands on YouTube, Facebook. You've got Instagram, too, I'm pretty sure. Um, so uh, what made you start Learn Your Land? So it's just born out of a personal need. I guess a few years ago, maybe in 2014, this is when I'm really getting into plant mushroom tree identification. Basically just literally trying to learn my land where I live. And I started attending all these different walks and workshops uh, put out by state parks, environmental centers, nature clubs, and just joining all these different clubs. And I realized that not a lot of these places had websites or not a lot of them advertise their walks pretty effectively and so I thought I kind of want to build something that environmental centers, state parks, nature clubs can use to post their walks, their events and almost advertise for them just to get more people learning this kind of information. And so I just contacted some web developers and it just built into what it is today which is primarily a database for naturalists in Pennsylvania so that they can advertise their walks and so we can get more people out there. And one of these days I'm trying to expand it to the whole nation and then maybe the whole world as well uh, but it's also a media channel and I think that's how you found me so I put out a lot of videos related to mushrooms and plants and trees uh, so it kind of morphed into that but I still have that database there so it's like a two-part approach with learning your land okay yeah I, I was looking at your website it looks really nice and uh, you do list off a bunch of different organizations and events going on it really is a hub for um, the Pennsylvania naturalists uh, community, which is really cool. It's it's kind of why I started Fungi Flora for myself. I just wanted to put other people on because, uh, I mean, because even you know, citizen scientists or people doing the actual work, like they're they're not a, they're not really good at advertising themselves. So you're right, and that's that's sort of uh, similar to my inspiration for starting my channel. That's yeah. There's a lot of us who'd rather spend time outside learning this stuff, and we yeah. don't want to be. <laughs> Here all day, and so I outsourced a lot of that. I mean, I hired web developers to build that website because I don't have any skills whatsoever in doing that. Right. Uh, but I like learning this stuff, and so I blended that passion with what the web developers were able to do. And I think we created something special, and I'm really curious to see, you know, how it's going to develop years from now, what it's going to turn into. But I'm really enjoying it. And I'm glad you checked it out as well. For sure, man. I think it's great, and just keep it up. And it, it is, it's going to grow, man. It's just a seed. That's the way the Internet is. It's just you plant a seed, and you just water it, and it grows. Yeah, for sure. So uh, how old were you when you first got into mushrooms? You said it was 2014. I think I just asked you that. Yeah, that was when I got into uh, building Learn Your Land, that database. I was into mushrooms a few years before that. Um, I guess I got into this late in the game. I don't know how old you were. Maybe you're raised this way, or your parents went to it. Nah, your grandma. nah. I, I mean, actually, a lot of people from Georgia, they they do say they they grew up with their parents teaching them how to hunt morels every season. But normally, it doesn't go outside of the the genus Morchella for them. But no, uh, yeah. I got into it myself when I was like 18 or 17. Just uh, you you know when you start realizing the natural world around you. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, I remember that moment in my life. Yeah, you just realize food and medicine is just growing right around you, and we just beat back this jungle. We put roads and street lights instead, but yeah. it's all around us, man. That, that's what got me into it. I was like 17 or 18, a few, so a few years ago, like 7 yeah. or 8. So for me, it was much later in life as well. I was in my maybe early 20s to mid-20s, so I wasn't raised this way. No. Um, but I know a lot of people who were. Mm -hmm. And they definitely have an advantage with that. I mean, if you've been studying this since you were three, four, five, six years old, and that's incredible, you know? Yeah. Um, but unfortunately for me, it's much later in life. And so I have a lot of catching up to do, which is why I spend hours and hours every day trying to learn this stuff. Yeah. Um, but I think my first memory with mushrooms was probably like Campbell's mushroom soup, eating that as a kid. And I loved it. So I didn't <laughs> like mushrooms. But when it came to wild mushrooms, I do remember wild mushrooms growing in my backyard, and I think they are some kind of copernoid fungus, like an inky cap. Mm -hmm. I remember just kicking them over, just thinking nothing of it. Yeah. And it wasn't until maybe 2009 or 10, maybe 2008, where I got into medicinal mushrooms. And that's mm -hmm. kind of how I found my way into this. It was through the medicinal mushrooms first, and then the edible mushrooms, and then, as you probably know and a lot of people know, just kind of snowballs from there. You just want to learn everything. Every single fungus, doesn't matter. It's edible, medicinal, benign, yeah. poisonous, 
um, we just want to learn everything. So that's where I am right now. Very cool. So uh, you kicked over a, an inky cap in your backyard, thinking nothing of yes. it. Um, and then you eventually, would you say it was a medicinal mushrooms that really uh, jump-started you into taking deep dives into mycology? Yeah, for sure. Um, I, some of my early mentors when it comes to mushrooms were really into the medicinal mushrooms. And in fact, most of my mentors when it comes to wild mushrooms, they're not mycologists. They're not even mushroom hunters. They're right. more nutritionists. They're health advocates. Mm -hmm. And that's how I found my way into here. I was getting sick in my early 20s. And I couldn't figure out what was going on with my body. What happened? So I asked about medicinal mushrooms. But I thought I had to order them online. Or I thought I had to travel to China yeah. or to, like, Siberia or the tropics to find these things. And I remember ordering the maitake mushroom online, Griffola frondos. Really? really? Getting it in and thinking it was, like, gold and making teas out of it. And then I realized that they literally grew in the city one mile from my house in Pittsburgh. And... The rest is history, as they say. I mean, I just got really, really into it, and then I got into the edible mushrooms and other things. But yeah, it was really the medicinal mushrooms that started it all. Very cool. Yeah, man, that moment when you realize it's not so exotic, or, or yeah. at least the place, the place uh, they grow everywhere, and, and it's just a matter of knowing, you know, which which regions. Um, but yeah, there it's it's that crazy moment when you realize they're not so exotic that they really grow in your natural environment, probably around you. It's it's a uh, it's a crazy thing. So what was um, what 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 kind of sickness did you have, if you don't mind me asking? I mean, to most people, it's, it's minor health issues. It was poor skin. It was poor hair. It was extremely poor digestion. To a lot of people, this isn't serious stuff. But if you're experiencing that in your late teens and your early 20s, if you don't take care of it then, imagine your health when you're 30. Imagine yeah. your health when you're 40. Yeah. It's going to compound, and it's going to present such deeper issues that it's going to be a lot harder to take care of 10 years from then, 20, 30, 40. And a lot of people don't pick up on those views. But for some reason, I did. I'm so grateful that I did. I don't know how, at the age of like 20, 21, that I had the force like, to know if I don't start taking care of myself now, that I'm going to be 10, 20, 50 times worse 20 years from then. Um, and so medicinal mushrooms helped. It wasn't the cure-all for anything, but it started the process. It got me outside. It got me into other natural medicines, and it got me into doing what I'm doing today. And so I'm lucky in that I get to work outside. And I get to work with the mushrooms today. So I owe a lot to medicinal mushrooms. Fantastic. That's a good story, man. Yeah. Thanks. So I got a couple more questions. Uh, what's your favorite mushroom? <laughs> It's like picking your favorite child if you have a child. <laughs> I mean, it's always changing. I I really couldn't pinpoint one. It depends on the season. It depends how I'm feeling. Yeah. It depends what new discoveries I'm encountering in the woods. Um, I mean, right now, it might be the maitake mushroom, Griffo frondosa, because it's just appearing right now in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And I love the way it tastes, and I love the medicinal compounds found within it. Uh, it's found in abundance. It's always a joy to find. It's not the easiest mushroom to find, so you have to put in a lot of work to find it. So I really like that one. But I've been getting into cordyceps a lot lately. Uh, lately. Mm. Cordyceps militaris, the orange caterpillar fungus. Um, I just started seeing it last year here in western Pennsylvania. I know it's been here much longer than that, yeah. but I finally started seeing it in the wild. And I've consumed cordyceps sinensis, the Asian variety. Uh, and I plan on making some medicine from our variety in a couple of years. The only downside is that there's such little material to harvest that you need a lot. Yeah. So, so I'm just collecting it. And so I might not be able to make a medicine this year, maybe the next year, maybe the year after that. But I'm patient so I can wait. So I have a little cordyceps jar. And I'm just like slowly accumulating little bits and pieces of cordyceps. So I really like that one as well. Very cool. Yeah, it is a tiny, tiny little mushroom. But uh, it's very potent. Uh, I, a lot of people will cultivate it. I don't. I forget which kind of materials they use to cultivate it, but uh, I. I think I saw you mention it online. You're just like me, where we've been so heavy into hunting and identification that we haven't worked on our cultivation skills. And I hope to get into that soon. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, my cultivation skills are lacking right yeah. now. At this point in my life, I'd rather be outside hunting the wild stuff. But sure. maybe one day I'll get. And I do respect the people who cultivate mushrooms. I think it's a crazy skill, and I think it's awesome. Yeah. Um, and everybody should take it up if they can. Mm -hmm. Maybe one day I can do it. Yeah, way cool. I don't want to get into it soon. So um, a couple more here, because I know you're trying to get out by 12.30. Oh, 
Um, um, what advice would you have for someone? This is a question I ask most people. What kind of advice do you have for someone who wants to learn mushrooms? Who are trying to learn mushrooms? Yeah. Trying to get into it. Yeah. So they don't know anything. They they're trying to get rid of their mycophobia, or they they just got interested. <laughs> Like, uh, what kind of advice would you have for someone just starting out? So, the advice that I'll give is the advice that I partook in early on in my journey with Bob Mushrooms, and that was to just attend as many walks and workshops and programs as you can. you got to get out there and learn from the experts, learn from the people, join a mushroom club. Um, it's not really about how many books do you have or how many forums do you belong to online. That stuff is good, and that'll help for sure. But you really got to surround yourself with the community that will support you in this journey. And if you are fortunate enough to have access to a mushroom club, join it right now. Like stop what you're doing, put this on hold and join that mushroom club. Yeah. Find out what their next event is and go to it. And you can go to NAMA's website, uh, NAMA.org maybe, or you just use your favorite search engine to find it. And then you can just scroll through your states and then you can find which mushroom club is nearest to you. Uh, but I'm so lucky because we have the Western Pennsylvania Mushroom Club where I live. And I'm an active member, I'm a board member of it, and one of the identifiers. If it wasn't for them, I probably wouldn't be as into wild mushrooms as I am right now. I'd probably just stop with consuming medicinal mushrooms and not really out there hunting them and finding them. Because, you know, in the past we had mentors, we had grandparents, we had elders who showed us this kind of information. We didn't have books, we didn't have websites, we had first-hand information. Yeah. And it still exists today, it's still out there. And that's one of the best ways to learn, especially if you're just getting into this. And you don't just have to go to the mushroom walks. If there's a plant walk nearby or a foraging walk or a tree identification walk, do you not think those things won't help you in identifying mushrooms? Yeah. I mean, to learn the ecology of your land, learn where the oak trees are, learn where the spruce trees are, the pine trees, all of this will help you in furthering your knowledge and uh, getting you deeper on the path to finding any wild mushroom that you want to find. Love that. Such a good answer. Um, yeah, thanks. Born out of experience. I mean, I still attend these things as much as I can. Yeah. Even the national forays. I mean, NAMA's coming up. I was just at NEMF about a month ago. Um, they, they bring you to a whole other level. I mean, there are people who will know way more than you could ever possibly know. Yep. And just being there, just through osmosis, you bring this stuff into you. And even if you only learn one new species, I mean, that's perfect. That's one species that you can add to your list that you might have never even added for the rest of your life if you didn't attend that event. Yep, for sure. So get out there, listeners. Just go join a club. It's uh, You won't regret it. So, um, let's see. Other than that, this might be a redundant question. What's another mushroom-related resource that you use that you might want to share? It is very related. So it, 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 it is very related. Up. No, no, and I can answer, I can answer it maybe with a twist. <laughs> um, so I do use the websites. I use Mushroom Observer. I use the Facebook groups. And if you're not using those websites or iNaturalist, definitely use them. I mean, get a Facebook account if you don't have one. Join all the groups and mm -hmm. just make your news feed all the pictures of mushrooms that people are posting. Now, some forums are better than others. A lot of it are just people showing off. Um, but some forums are really good. They're really there to help you learn uh, the subject matter. But... There is no substitute for experience getting out there and joining the club. So I'm going to bring it back to that as well. That's the best resource that there is, in my opinion, surrounding yourself with other people. And honestly, maybe the best resource within that is a mentor. If you can find someone in that club who will take you under their wing, find the people who really know what they're talking about in your area because there is somebody in your area who mm -hmm. knows their mushroom. Call them up, go to their house, ask if you can go out mushroom hunting with them. They will take you to a whole new level. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for that. So, Adam, uh, before we let you go, what's the best way people can get in touch with you and learn your land? So the best way would maybe go to learnyourland.com, and then there's an email sign-up, like right there on the homepage. And then I send out information maybe every two, three weeks, plant videos, mushroom videos, all kinds of educational videos. And then you have access to my email address, so we can stay in touch that way. Yeah. Um, but also I'm on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, at learn your land and I try to respond to and as many messages as I possibly can um, so we can stay in touch that way and another way is to come to Western Pennsylvania and attend one of the walks that I lead so I lead a lot of walks and workshops related to not just mushrooms but plants and foraging as well cool 
Um, and if you're subscribed to that email list, you'll get all the updates. And a lot of these walks are free as well. Um, so we can stay in touch that way in person. Awesome, man. Well, I'm going to link up uh, those websites and uh, other links that you just mentioned so people don't have to go search too hard for them. But um, I really appreciate your time, and uh, I guess we'll say goodbye for now. Yeah, thanks a lot. Appreciate it, John. Hopefully I'll see you out there in the woods someday. Cool, man. Hopefully I'll come out to Pennsylvania.